So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Welcome to my iPhone 11 2023 update video. Now I did this video in 2022 to begin the year. I was a little more excited because back then the iPhone 12 cost more, but now the iPhone 12 came down to the lower price point, but you can find yourself the iPhone 11 at a pretty low price I say pretty low because it's not super low, but still, I mean, you would have paid 700 bucks for this thing new. Now let's look at this on eBay, kind of like where people sell it third party. You could see 319, 289. So you're gonna snag this phone, you know, if you're in the US anyway, for right around 250 to 300 bucks used now. Now I would say that's a pretty good deal considering what you are getting here with the iPhone 11 you are getting a phone that does have a 6.1 inch display, just like the iPhone 14 over here. Um, yeah, the bezels are definitely thicker, and overall the phone itself just feels older, chunkier than that of the iPhone 14, which is a lot newer, but the iPhone 11 still does represent a phone that can definitely be usable for you. The phone itself does have the latest version of the software here, iOS 16.2 on board. And what that means is that if you are still using this or you pick one up, you're nearly gonna have the same experience as somebody using the latest and greatest iPhone 14. So they can't really brag about that. Talking about the overall build quality of the phone, you know, the aluminum edges, power button right there. Overall, still feels like a tank. It still feels super premium. Silent switch right there. At the bottom, you could see precisionly cut holes for speaker, microphone, and we do have ourselves the lightning port right there. The phone itself just still feels quite nice. It's because mostly they didn't really change much from the iPhone 14 in 2023. Besides, we do have thinner bezels and squared edges. So the phones have felt so similar for so long, it just doesn't feel like a major change to go to something like a 14 here in 2023 when you were talking about just like, it's not like going to a foldable or a flip phone. So the iPhone 11, if you're looking for a deal, is still solid. Now talking about the display itself, it's either a love it or hate it kind of thing with the display here for the iPhone 11, mostly because it does employ an LCD panel, something that some people think is super cheap. It's lame, doesn't look sharp enough compared to the beautiful OLED. And I did brag myself about how the iPhone 12 brought beautiful OLED, and I'm happy about that. I'm happy the 14 gives OLED at less than a thousand bucks, but I'm not happy about 60 Hertz at this price. However, when talking about the iPhone 11, the 60 Hertz is not a big deal on the 11 because of what you're gonna pay for it right now. And it still feels about as smooth as a 2022, 2023 iPhone 14. So that's what's really disappointing about the newer 14s having 60 Hertz is they feel like phones from four years ago, like the iPhone 11, but that's good for the 11 buyers who are looking for a deal. So display, not the brightest out there, not the sharpest out there, and it is LCD, so do keep that in mind. But keep in mind also that you know LCD does match up with a lot of laptops, a lot of desktops, so it can look quite nice when you are just kind of reading things on that screen, you come to this screen, it's not that much of a downgrade, anything like that. So you can see right there, let's move on to performance. The performance of the phone can stutter a little bit from time to time, rare unless you're doing a lot at once, which you're probably not gonna be doing too much considering that the iPhone 11 now, you know, in most iPhones are just, they don't multitask. You can kind of swipe between apps like this and go between stuff. There's floss, by the way. You can go ahead and go between things, but you can't really, you know, do, you can't do split screen, nothing like that. So what the heck, you know, what the heck are you gonna do with the extra RAM on the newer phones? The iPhone 14 does have the, it does have the six gigs of RAM, which you have four gigs on the 11. But honestly, guys, tell me in the comments how you're taking advantage of the six gigs of RAM. Is it just because you're using it for loading stuff, games? You think it's going to load things a little faster? Let me know. Honestly, I don't see the performance to be a big issue here. When it comes to the camera system 
on the iPhone 11. It's also still very good. There's really no issue with it here in 2023. As a matter of fact, it's more than usable, ultra wide angle. It does have not very long zoom, but neither does this new phone right here. So nobody's really complaining too much about that besides us techies. 4K 60 is good. Front facing camera is strong. No problems here. You know, the front facing photos also pretty strong as well. Of course, they don't have the same HDR quality as the newer ones. You don't got the action mode. You don't got all that business, but you do have slow motion, time lapse, portrait. And honestly, this is when the video quality and the overall just kind of feel of the camera got really good in my experience. And this is when I really started using these more for more B-roll, more photography, videography with the 11 series. It really was an enjoyable series, I think. And one of the best when the camera did come out in the 11 models. And now when it comes to the battery life, this is also very good. The phone can easily last all day and it just seems to drain pretty slow for me even on the iPhone 11 here, and being the age it is, it still drains pretty slow. So that's pretty good. It's an all day phone and maybe then some for light users. Heavy users easily should get through a day as well. At LCD, this doesn't drain too much you know, power, which is really good. OLED does good with the darker colors, but you know, the 14s are pretty similar as well. They do a little bit better in battery, especially the main ones not the 14 pros those are decent those are pretty good as well but the 11 at the time was super impressive in the battery and it still is also another thing to note when you put low power mode on any of the 60 hertz power savings it stays there on any of the 60 hertz iphones on the iphone 14 pro models if you put the low power mode they drop the 60 hertz jars the experience a little bit not here though so i would just run this thing most of the time in low power mode now, the audio on here is also pretty good, average or so in 2023. You know, there's just so many phones with great speaker performance on the phone these days. Doesn't really matter. Phone call quality, not the best here. I don't recommend picking this up for phone call. The iPhone 14, the iPhone 15s that are gonna come, the iPhone 13, 12, those all improved in the area of 5G. This does not have 5G. Also, keep in mind, this doesn't have you know, any of the the newer, faster performing modems as well. So that's something to keep in mind, but it does have a SIM card tray. So none of that eSIM garbage, you're all good to go there. So we talked about display software, gonna be the same thing here as an iPhone 14 besides the camera features. It's always just a change in the camera features. But if you're buying this now, you gotta ask yourself, can you live with just maybe two more software updates? I think that's all this is gonna get is maybe two more major software updates for the iPhone 14. We're gonna give you many more years, but the 11, just gonna give you a couple more. So battery is good, display average, you know, the sound audio quality, also average, not great phone call quality. The body feels a little bit dated compared to the squared bodies, but they might go back to this. The overall phone is nice at two, 300 bucks, you are pushing newer Pixel phone territory there. So there is better options if you want something more modern. But if you need a secondhand iPhone, you need an iPhone to pass on to a relative. Maybe you dropped yours, broke yours, you need a hold over iPhone. This could be a pretty good steal right here, especially if you're picking it up out of pocket. Not everybody does. If you're paying on it, you know, there's no point in paying on an older iPhone. But if you're that type of person who picks up one of these up, use you're trying to save save a buck or two. This could be a decent option to try out for a year or two if you don't want to go all out on the iPhone experience. And then if you really like it, then maybe go all out on the iPhone experience. And not to mention, this does come in multiple colors. This is just the white model you see here. So if you have the iPhone 11, do me a favor, share your experience. Do you have, have you enjoyed it? What has it been like for you? Let us know down below in the comments. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know if you want to see any more videos like this going forward on some of our other iPhones in our 2023 series down below. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.